Uh, lovely. All right, thanks everyone. Um, I wanted to quickly walk you through some of the social research that we conducted over the past few years. Um, and I'm encouraged to, to hear that it aligns very much with what Tina presented and also what I heard about in, in the education session yesterday. So the impetus for conducting this social research was um, one of the goals in our strategic plan in the Office of Environment, and I'll just call it OEH from this point forward. And it really was to determine what motivates the community to partner with OEH and, and look at the motivations and barriers. And we wanted to make that our first goal so that we could then design, um, base our project design and development around these outcomes. So we partnered with an agency to conduct this social research, and this is an over, overview of our methodology. Uh, we confirmed the design um, with our group. Uh, we reviewed all the relevant literature and the information, and then we conducted just some rapid appraisal interviews just to get a lay of the land, so to speak. We then went to nine different focus groups, and these were conducted across three different age categories. And the people involved in those focus groups were just gem members of the general public in New South Wales, some with experience in environmental volunteering and others with absolutely no, no experience whatsoever. And I actually got to sit beside behind the one-way mirror. And if any of you ever get a chance to do that, it is fascinating to be on the other side. So, and we also... Uh, to complement those focus groups, we also conducted some in-depth interviews with, with citizen scientists that participate in our projects in OEH. So based on those findings, um, we then went out for an online survey, and this had a total sample size of 480, uh, with 112 professionals and 368 general members of the community. From this, we were able, we were able to test some hypotheticals, generate a what-if tool. So what if I change this variable? How would that increase or decrease the likelihood of participating in my project? And then we came out with some, uh, some barriers and, and some ways to, some suggestions for how to engage our community better. So the, one of the first questions we asked, and this is just a quick snapshot of the many questions that we asked, is how knowledgeable think they are about science. And as you can see, there's, there's a little bit of a difference between the professionals and the, and the total, but not much. And on the whole, people are not very confident with their, their knowledge of science. So, well, moderately confident, I'd say. And then we asked what kind of um, organizations have people interacted with in the past? science organizations. Um, not too surprising, I think, in terms of the results of this one. So the number one was universities, um, not-for-profits, et cetera, et cetera. But as you can see, um, the majority of people had absolutely no interaction with these organizations. So again, that's just sort of something to keep in mind um, when you're thinking about the design of your projects. And then we asked people about what they thought about the term citizen science. And this was so surprising. So three quarters of people had no idea what we were talking about. So there, a lot of people were really spooked out by the term. So what is that? That's Citizen Kane. That's really weird. I don't understand it. Um, and it's really an outdated term. I don't know what you mean. You know, that's, that's quirky. Um, and, but then a small margin of people did associate it with the environment. But this was absolutely on the minor minority. And I think this is a reflection of the term citizen. And I think it has probably a different, different meaning in the US. Um, uh, and so I think, again, it's something really to be mindful of when we're promoting our projects. Um, we, are, we are not leading with the word citizen science, for example, based on this research. But once we explained the term, um, then people were right on board. So, like, great, I get it, I understand what that means, and to me, and again, this highlights what we've heard, this is about me making a contribution, I can save the planet, um, this is tapped into my curiosity, um, we can use technology, um, become a responsible citizen. Um, they were absolutely on board once they understood the meaning. So then we asked them what sorts of organizations undertake citizen science. And again, this was not prompted. So I, I actually haven't heard of any um, citizen science projects run by the Salvation Army. So, um, <laughs> but. It, it just sort of highlights that people really do not know. They don't know who's conducting citizen science, um, and this is really their, their best guess. Um, CSIRO was the number one, but again, just a, a, a really insignificant 
um, sample. And so this is when we prompted them. So we gave them a list of organizations. Um, and so uh, based on this list, who do you think wants volunteers in this case um, to work on science projects? And so um, interesting, the NGOs came out on top followed by uh, universities. But again, look at the percentage that had, uh, I, I really don't know, I don't, don't have any idea, um, with government kind of coming into the middle. And then we asked, and we've got a, a number of different questions um, to delve into this space. So what sort of topics would you like to work on? And by far, um, most of the people were really interested in threatened species, followed by climate change, and then air pollution. So that's really helping us try to understand what the community would like to, to work on and what's really resonating with them. So based on our research, we came up with some common barriers to citizen science. And so the first, obviously, is this, this unknown entity. Like, people don't really know what it is. Um, and the name itself is incredibly alienating for, for most of them. We also find that, found that science is a barrier. So we had a lot of people say, I only went to year 11 in science. I couldn't possibly partake in science. I wouldn't know what to do. Um, so again, you need to think about how you frame your projects um, to, to invite people in. It also really didn't get, grab, get people's attention unless you kind of explain the concept and explain the kinds of projects that they might be able to involved in. And again, this issue of time was raised, like I'm, I'm time poor, um, I, I don't know if I would be able to commit. So again, based on um, our results, we were able to build this ladder of what we think defines a good citizen science project, and this is probably nothing new. We've heard this for the past couple of days. But obviously having that sense of common purpose, that's been really clear. So be having a really articulate um, vision for what your project wants to achieve. You absolutely have to tap into people's passions and interests. So that was very clear. And again, we've heard that again today. Time is so important, so really clear time frame. So this will take 15 minutes of your day once a week, um, and you can do it from your back backyard. That will raise the appeal of the project and really increase the likelihood of participation. And people want regular feedback. Um, that says fracking. Tracking. Should say tracking. Um, <laughs> I was in a hurry. Um, and they want to know how their contribution is making a difference. So. What's, what's what I'm contributing? How is that making a difference? What's, what's happening? What are the decisions? Um, they want to know all of that with regular feedback. And they absolutely want to be acknowledged and rewarded, but that doesn't have to be massive. People love a certificate, um, but they do feel that that's an important element. And, and this was also touched on the social experience, so that was highlighted of a real benefit to partaking in citizen science is that social element, um, meeting new people, and then social media was raised as a, as a great benefit and a platform for that as well. So in conclusion, um, few in the community understood when we undertook our research what citizen science really was, and the name on the whole was very alienating. Um, for people. But once we explained the term and the concept, um, people were on board. So that's the good news. And they were on board and they could understand and see the many benefits of participating in citizen science. And be mindful that science itself is a barrier. So it was highlighted time and time again that um, they didn't feel they were qualified. Um, and so you have to figure out a way to invite people in that comforts them and reassures them that they'll be able to make a meaningful contribution. And um, I think that's it for me. Yeah, I kind of raced through that. Thank you.